Hell and lock at the Jews. As black men, we will say, um, we don't feel like we can be on our, thin, our authentic selves because then we get attacked. So I can't show weakness because I don't want to be a mark. I show um, sadness because I'm supposed to be able to handle everything for everybody else. I can't show a level of anxiety and too much stress because then the people around me are going to get stressed out and then what they going to do. Mm. Um, but what's what's crazy for us is we can't even show good stuff. Mm. No, that's tough. Hey, let me know in the comment section below if you can relate to anything that he's sharing as a man, like being in culture, seeing all these expectations, knowing the weight that's put on you, what you're supposed to do, how much you're supposed to hold and not being able to express emotions, show anxiety, show worry, show fear, cry and, and things like that because you're seen in a certain light. I think that's a very, very common perspective that's thrown around for men. And it's interesting. I heard a, I heard a take earlier in the week. Sometimes, man, a lot of that can come from childhood, even something as small as receiving a whooping or punishment or correction from parents. And then when you start showing that emotion, you start crying and you start, you know, bottling up a little bit and, and all you're told is shut up in those moments and you better be quiet right now. Right. And so things like that, where that can somehow some way be programmed into you that even when you're feeling it at its peak, that you're told to hush and be quiet and bottle it up and shut up and I don't want to hear it anymore. And you're not able to express yourself in those moments, express your emotions. And I, I think that's a very interesting thing. But I'm going to bring up a text that I think for me freed up a lot of willingness, man, to just feel emotions and express them and show them straight from the scriptures. So hold on for a second, because I'm, I'm going to come right back to that. But let, let's finish this thought up. There are black men in here that, that know I can't be too happy because this fool gonna think I'm goofy. Yeah. Mm. I can't show that I'm in love because then they gonna think I'm crazy. I'm then somebody, somebody gonna tweak me. Okay, so there's a lot of I can't statements and there's a lot of perceived perception. Well, I can't be this because if I am, then they are going to. I can't be that because if I do, then they are going to think I'm. We've all experienced this as a human human thing, not just a black man thing or a manly thing. It's a human thing, something to consider. But we're going to come back to that as well. I can't be overly excited because I got to act like I've been there before. Hmm. So when you're suppressing both negative feelings and positive feelings, we have actually said that to be, you got to be stoic and humanless. Hmm. And then we get mad when the world treats us inhumanely. Hmm. And so this is it's not about us changing the narrative about who black men are. Black men who know black men know that black men are not that. True. Permission to be it. Beautiful. We have to give ourselves permission to be it. I'm not even going to necessarily like speak from a perspective of I've experienced everything you have. Man, there's been a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, a lot of struggles that men go through on the daily. Things that, man, I'm going to be honest, I'm not even going to sit here and say that I can, I can relate. It can be a cold world out here. It can be a tough world out here to deal with and not just in the home, but outside the home. But I think it's so interesting to see this verse in the text that really, really gives me the permission to embrace the emotions that I have and not be seen or labeled rather, or not be so concerned about what I'm labeled as because of the revealing of such emotions. And I'm going to reveal this text here. The shortest verse in the scriptures, Jesus wept, John 11 verse 35. And of course, if you guys know and are familiar with the text, this is in the context of the friend of Jesus, Lazarus, who has died and has now at this point been buried for four days. And Mary and Martha came to get Jesus four days prior. He was slow to get there. And he gets there. He comes. They tell him, Lord, if you'd have been here, you know, he wouldn't have even been here. All these kinds of things. And in the context, they reveal to him where he's laid. And this is where Jesus shows up. He cries. Now, this is so interesting. This is a very powerful text because Jesus is Jesus. God in the flesh. Miracle worker can do anything and everything. Nothing is impossible for him to do. He's healed the sick. He's raised the dead. He's allowed the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. Like, what are we really doing here? Jesus knows he has the power. Jesus knows Lazarus isn't even legitimately dead. And by legitimately dead, I just mean spiritually. Like, Jesus recognizes that. And yet he weeps. And I think this just shows that even Jesus experienced the full human experience. And I love what he says in the middle of this conversation. It's robbing black men in his context of being human. 
And I think that's what culture has done over time is robbed man of experiencing humanity, fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, stress, tears, frustration, like all these things that all are a part of the human experience. What I'm trying to get at to you is that if we really do reverence Jesus to be God in the flesh, to have all power, to be everything that he not only proclaimed to be, but the scriptures say he is, witnesses say he is, even to this day, then I think what we really are wrestling with is how we're going to be perceived by other people based on the emotions we share, which also in some way, shape or form reveals that we are struggling with our security and identity. And I think the security that we really need is found in Christ because Christ led the way in the human experience, therefore making him relatable because he's done and been through things that we have too. He's experienced emotional pain. He's experienced being tempted with emotional pleasure. He's experienced those things. And so I think it's up to us, like he mentioned, to give ourselves permission. And I think one of the best ways to give yourself permission is to look at what Jesus did. Jesus felt all of that. So why can't you? Are you better than Jesus? That you, you're too good to show emotion? that you you don't really you don't really rock like that and i definitely get that there are different styles of personality traits and different kinds of men who maybe show more emotion less emotion those kinds of things but we all experience frustration we all experience moments of anger and sadness and grief and despair we we all experience moments of confusion and worry and anxiety it's a part of humanity so let's embrace being human Let's embrace the gift God has given us as men to be people who can step into spaces of leadership and lead even in things like this, expressing our emotions and being honest and vulnerable about it. And I think when you're able to do that, even James tells us that there's healing in things like confession. That takes vulnerability. That takes awareness. That takes us being willing to be secure enough in our identity to say, man, even though this person may view me a certain way, I need to get this off my chest in order to get the healing I need because the healing I need is more important than how I'm perceived. The healing I need is more important. And I think if we can wrap our minds around that, we'll actually live healthier lives. And a lot of it starts with programming. A lot of it starts with internal programming and recognizing where this originated from. Who was the authority figures in my life that were telling me that it wasn't okay to do these things and it wasn't okay to express emotions? What were the big moments where maybe I did express emotion and the response, the feedback, the clap back was pretty gnarly, pretty crazy, wild. And I told myself I'd never do it again because I'm not going to allow that to be something that happens to me again, whether I was laughed at, mocked at, the whole group chat roasted me, it went viral all over Twitter. I was like, man, I'm never doing that again. They ain't gonna never catch me slipping, right? Something traumatic that took place. That that could be something that is present. Or think about maybe the constants, the repetitiveness. Maybe you consistently heard that same message. Maybe you consistently saw somebody do something and they never showed emotion. That was never something they expressed. So all these different areas that we can look to to narrow down where it came from, I think our biggest challenge is to look into that. Let's meditate on that. Let's be man enough to be able to, to see that and say, you know what? I got to do better with expressing my emotions. And, uh, and the expressing them comes with becoming more aware of them, becoming more understanding of them, being able to pinpoint where it really began. Man, I come in the house, I'm mad, but it's not the people that in the house that I'm really mad at. It's actually the stuff that happened on the job. And I carried it back into the house and it still got me flustered. That's why I went off and was mad about the fork in the in the sink or mad that this wasn't where I wanted it to be or how I told and said it would be. That's what set it over the edge. It's not really because of what I'm yelling at, perhaps. Maybe it's because of something that happened earlier today. Like those kinds of things that we can internalize and we can look at and meditate and say, OK, well, now that I know where that's where that came from, how has it made me feel now that I've expressed it vocally because I let it bottle up. How did it make me feel when I expressed that? How did it make the other people around me feel when I expressed it in that way? And I think ultimately what we want to do is care more about the relationships around us to the point where we're considerate of not just how people feel when we unleash those emotions abruptly on them, but also how are we impacting the relationship when we withhold those things in terms of the initial emotions we're feeling? How, how are we impacting it, right? Is this something that maybe should be known with my spouse or significant other future, right? With family, 
with those around me. A lot of that comes with vulnerability, comes with the willingness to be vulnerable. And in a lot of ways, that's great leadership. Like, I don't know if we look at vulnerability as an opportunity to lead, but it is. And he's a phenomenal leader. And, and Jesus is, is a great example of this. Jesus weeps at the tomb of a dead man he knew he could rise and then later rises in the chapter from the grave. And I think it just shows that he was willing to experience the full human experience, even something to the emotion of grief, overwhelming emotion from a moment where his dear friend is sleeping in the grave. And if we really revere Jesus to be all he says he is, let's take him up on this too. That man, Jesus, you expressed emotion. You showed emotion. You were very emotionally intelligent. And I think it ought to encourage us to want to strive to do the same. And so the question becomes how, and I think some of the applications I gave to you in this video, journal out your emotions, write them down, get better understanding, question them. Why do I feel this way? Where was the beginning root to this emotion that I'm now either bottling up, trying to process, or I unleashed on somebody because it was pinted up and it went weeks stewed over time. I continued to allow it to happen. I never said anything. I never spoke up. I never addressed them with it, never spoke to them about it. And so it pinted up and then here we are, a mess. And I think we need to be willing to learn from those and, and really continue to dissect and make sure that the next time something like that happens, we're able to better dissect our emotions. And this takes practice. This takes continual reps, but this takes willingness to give ourselves permission. And I think the first thing you want to recognize is who was it in your life that wasn't giving you the permission? Because you continuously say you can't do this because if they, because if I do, then they'll do this. What can you do? And whose approval are we really after as men? Other men? Or are we choosing to serve God and seek for his approval over our lives and the freedom that he grants us. Because I think true freedom isn't appearing like you've got it all together, but deep inside you're crushed. I think true freedom is being able to let others know you don't have it all together and not be so caught up in how you're perceived because you let them know you don't have it all together, because you know that you were never supposed to put yourself together in the first place. Jesus is the one who holds it all together. I don't even have the strength to do that. I'm completely dependent on him. This is what's so beautiful about Jesus is that he gets to glory in our weakness. It's a beautiful combination of being able to show my weakness as a man and not care so much about my own status that I don't allow others to see Christ in the midst of my weakness, because then it becomes who am I looking to truly glorify Christ or myself and how Christ is glorified in those moments is by letting people I trust know what's going on so I can get the healing I may need, understanding I may need, guidance I may need, processing I may need to be able to grow in my understanding of my emotions and move forward to live. I think those are those are some interesting thoughts to consider. So shout out to this video. I think he dropped a beautiful nugget. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say allow your anger to get the best of you and allow all of your disappointment to get the best of you to the point where you begin to put hands on people and you start acting irrationally. What I am saying, though, is that in those moments where your emotions are strong and you really feel some type of way about something. Don't speak on it if it's something that you can't say without giving such a aggressive approach to, but be willing to process through that emotion and come to a place where you're like, man, I'm ready to talk about this. Approach it with grace. Approach it with humility. Approach it with curiosity. Let me get your thoughts on this. I've been feeling this way a little bit. Do you have the capacity and room to listen to me for a second and be able to get the wisdom that you need to move forward? So those are my thoughts. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts to what he shared? Is it true that men have not given themselves permission to feel, express their emotions, those kinds of things? And are you someone who you would consider to be emotionally intelligent to the point where you're aware of your emotion, you can process them, so on and so forth. I'd just be so curious to hear. Don't forget to like this video, share it with a friend, subscribe if you're new. And as always, until our next conversation, be easy and be breezy, my friend. Peace.